the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. We always got to this is all about peace, about the spiritual, not about the flesh. It's not about the color. It can never be about the color because the color or the flesh is temporal. So that's what we're going to talk about. And I think we should move forward as, as we move forward in our studies continuously. Because remember, we're talking about spiritual changes, spiritual salvation, not physical salvation is spiritual right and that's what we're going to talk about let's pray father thank you for this opportunity to come to worship and praise your holy name you said with two or three god in your name you've been in the midst of them and they invite to receive the present holy spirit to lead us and guide us in all truth heavenly father i thank you and father i pray lord that that we just get understanding that we're talking about a spiritual connection a, a we're talking about an eternal connection eternal life and we know that that's not in the flesh but in the spirit and we're going to address these things and remind people of who you are spiritually so that we can start being able to put aside those things of the world which causes division hate and unforgiveness uh, just use this study and never continue to build on that study that we're talking about spirituality I thank you Heavenly Father as we get into the word, in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. So my point is that we must focus on the spirit of man connected to God, opposed to the the, the flesh. You know, I, I've been doing my studies, especially when I do it on TikTok. I've been talking about the fruits of the spirit, right? Look at that, the fruits of the spirit. I ain't talking about the fruits of the flesh, right? And all the works of the flesh. We're talking about the fruits of the spirit. The fruits of the spirit is love, joy, and peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. So that's what we want to be able to understand is our Christian walk is based on the spirit, not based on the color of our skin, not based on our skin at all. We're going to be in some scripture, going to sit there saying, my flesh dwells is no good thing. So you know if my flesh dwells is no good thing, it can never be about the flesh. And yet that's where our wars and division come from, based on trying to satisfy the flesh instead of trying to satisfy the spirit satisfies and pleases God. And see, you know, even scripture said, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them who diligently seek him. Come on now. We can't please God in the flesh. We got to walk by faith and not by sight. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, as Christians, I know we, we, especially when we get down and deal with people, our history. And the history has been really the works of the flesh. When people sit there and do bad things to one another, distance from one another, hating one another, not accepting one another, it's all based on the flesh. We want to sit there and when you talk about superiority, you talk about flesh. Inferiority, you talk about the flesh. You're talking about the abilities, what you can do in the flesh. And he says, not by the power, not by your power, but by his might. You know what I mean? So that's why we're let's get into this. And 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 I pray that people listen to this. Uh, we'll break it down in segments too. Is that you are a spirit and you must understand that. And that we need to look at one another, not connected based on our color of skin, but based on our spirit. You remember that when two or three gather together, he is in the midst of us. Well, you know, he didn't talk about being physically in the midst, right? Come up in the spirit. And when we pray, we're not praying to, that's why he said, I don't have no bring no images before me. Because he's not tangible in this 
world. He's spiritual. He only came, sent Jesus, his son, to die for mankind. To connect us back to a spiritual relationship, which only way you can walk by faith and not by sight, is based on the spirit. That's what he wants us to do. Focus on the spirit of man. Huh? So let's go into some of the scriptures and see what I'm talking about. And, and so I'm, I'm laying the case that we 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 only really want to rise above uh, the, the the divide between man uh, and all all mankind is to start focusing not on the outward appearance but on the inward appearance. All right? You remember, I like the, uh, like I said, here's the title says, not about the color of the skin, but about the inward spirit of the man. And we're going to do, like, we're going to try to just like that on to the, to the when you see to, to the right of me or to the left of me, you see that says, they make a sense and understanding God's word, Nehemiah 8, 8. So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading, right? That's what we want to do. Let's understand the reading and understand the spiritual revelations in the word of God, not in our flesh. We, we have to, we will. Put this way, you either be in the flesh or you be in the spirit. He's telling you you're going to be in the spirit. Look at this right here in John 8, 31. It says, then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue what? In my word, not in my flesh, but in my words, then you are my disciples. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We want to make sure that we understand what makes us free from this bondage and the divisions that man creates for himself. John 4, 24, God is what? God is what? God is what? God is a spirit. And they that worship him you must worship him what? In spirit and in truth. He said you worship in the flesh, but you worship in the spirit. A relationship with him in the spirit. Galatians 3, 27, for as many, as many of you as have been baptized, where? Into Christ, the anointing, have put on the anointing, Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female, for you are all one where? In Christ Jesus. And if you be where? In Christ, not in your flesh, but in Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and heir according to the promises. And I just want, as we keep reading this, and we're talking from a spiritual perspective, not a physical, common perspective. Amen? So, look at this here. Life in the Spirit. I don't want to think I'm talking about spirituality, and this is exactly what this is talking about. There's therefore now no condemnation with, to them which are in the in Christ Jesus, who walk not what? After the flesh, but what? After the spirit. For the law of the spirit and life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Look. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin where? In the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that after the flesh do what? Mind the things of the flesh. For they that are after the spirit of things of the spirit. See, so when you get into this, this division of black and white and brown, or based on the geographical locations a person comes from, when you get into the point of looking at the outward appearance, you're a cardinal. You're thinking through the flesh. You're judging things by the flesh. You say you walk by faith, which is not by the flesh. See, I walk by faith, not by sight. I mean, I don't walk by my senses. I walk by my spirit. The just shall live what? By faith. Huh? The just does not live by his senses. And yes, you live this way. 
you're in this world, but you're not of this world. Once you put on Christ, now you start thinking spiritual. That's what Christ was trying to say. That's why the Jewish people had a hard time receiving him because they, they were looking at him from the flesh. Look at it. He said, for to be commonly minded is death. Look at that. Because it has a, 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 a end point. But to be spiritual minded is life and peace. Because the cardinal mind is enmity against God, for it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. I always like to say that because most people don't understand. The flesh is not subject to the laws of God because the flesh has a end point. It ends. It expires. You know? And so therefore, we don't sit there and, and be cardinal minded or to, to base our relationship with God or our fellow man based on the color of our skin or based on our flesh, you'll miss, you'll miss the body every time. Because you're not spiritual minded, you're common minded. Look at this. So the day that the flesh will not please God. So if you are somebody who looks, I'm talking, listen to you, listen to me, whoever you, whoever you are, whoever you may be, listen, listen. If you operate in the flesh, you are not pleasing God. You may be pleasing man. But you're not pleasing God. What's more important, to please God or please man? Think about it. That's a question for you to look at. That's a question for you to consider. Do you wish to please God or do you wish to please man? Do you wish to please those things that are temporal opposed to those things that are eternal? That's what you have to look at. And this is the question of what you train, raise your child to do. Are you train, raising your child to focus on the outward appearance or you focus on your child to focus on the spiritual uh, experience, right? So back again, it says, so then, verse 8, so then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You, once again, who are you trying to please, God or man? But you are not, well, look at this, you are not in the flesh, but where? In the spirit. That's what spirituality is about. The same thing is about spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwells where? In you. We're talking about the indwelling of God in you. Now, if any man has not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So if you are uh, trying to operate and, and, and raise your children by focusing on your flesh and the, and the difference between other people's flesh, you are not of God. That's what the Scripture says. Now, if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he is not, not of his. You can't be. See, I'm just saying that all that teaching people give you, and, and I, you take it, take the scripture to somebody. When they want to say, hey, I'm, I'm black, or I'm brown, or I'm, 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 I'm red skin, or yellow skin, or whatever people want to call themselves. When you sit there and, and try to operate based on the outward appearance, this right here, and you try to raise your children on this, if you're trying to tell your children that your righteousness is based on this, then you are not of God. You are not of God because he said it's not about the flesh, it's about the spirit. Now you can sit there and find your pleasure in the in the flesh. You can find your revenge in the flesh. I mean, that's what probably most people when they get into the flesh, that's where the unforgiveness can be. That's where all good reminded what a person's done, not about forgiving what the person is dead. If you do that, then that's where you are, and you're not of God, but you are of the world. And I don't know about you, but I'm telling you, I'd rather be of God. I'd rather be in Christ. And the simple thing about being in Christ is to be in the spirit. First night again. But you are not in the flesh. So stop trying to operate and please people in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man is not the spirit of Christ, he is not of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. And all the sin that comes short of the glory of God. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Now, righteousness is based on the righteousness of God, not the spirit. But if the spirit of him, listen now, the spirit of him, the rays of Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He, the rays of Christ from the dead, shall also quicken what? Your mortal bodies 
what? By his spirit that dwells in you. Catch that, keep, keep that key point in there. The spirit is being very clear over and over again. You will not justify your relationship. You will not justify anything in the flesh. Not to God. Now you can justify it to man. And you can do all kinds of trickery things to, 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 to divide this country, divide somewhere in the world based on the flesh and not based on the spirit. Then you're gonna always have, we're gonna always have these little wars because we're gonna sit there and, and as if the person skin is a jersey. And as long as they keep wearing that jersey, then therefore that we, we're supposed to hate and divide for one another. Listen, you are a spirit being, not a physical flesh person. Your eternal life will not be in, nobody's eternal life will be in the flesh. There's plenty of coffins out there from, from hundreds and thousands of years of people being buried. Their bones could be found and collected. Meaning that your child, your parents, yourself will one day be outside of this house. So don't invest yourself in this house. I ain't talking about being working out and that you, you, you take care of your body and this is your temple. I'm talking about the fact that don't invest your eternal life. Don't bake everything in your, your eternal life on this outward appearance, on this flesh, because all you're going to do is put yourself at odds against God, not man. And see, it's not about man, because man can't put you in hell, man can't take you out of hell. God can. And that's where you want to have that relationship with him. So let's understand, this is a spiritual, our faith is based on spirituality, not on cognitive carnality, right? So th just think about that. So look at this, the next verse. Verse 18, for I know that in me, this is, this is, this jump from, uh, uh, matter of fact, I wanted, we move from Romans 8 to Romans 7. And look at this, this is what I've been talking about. And, and I didn't write it. I'm only reading it. And I'm saying what the word says. Romans 7, verse 18. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. And see, when we talk about the issues of the history of man, and I'm talking about we got some bad history. We know we got some bad history. And I'm talking about is that history is not just a, of a white man, not the history of just a black man or a brown man. We all have histories that we're not proud of and ashamed of. You know, I was, I was looking at the day we were talking about the importer they were trying to come up with a law that says uh, do not teach or anything to make somebody feel bad or guilty. You see, we, we missed the boat on understanding. It's not so much about the fact that you feel bad about it. It's about the fact is that if we don't remember our history, we're bound to repeat it. And then, and then most of the biggest fear most people is that they, some people say, they say that the group that was treated bad at one time will be the group that's going to treat other people bad the next time around. And then it becomes a cycle. That's what that does, a, a repeating cycle. War after war after war. Conflict after conflict after conflict. Unforgiveness is all about the fact is that nations and, and, and ethnic groups uh, can't forgive one another for the bad things that they did. And we don't understand is that vengeance is the Lord. And I hate the fact is that most people for generation to generation taught to hate. If they died in that hate, 
then the Bible said they're a murderer. There's no eternal life abiding in a murderer. You're guilty, and the only way you can have redemption